Hello, Simon Jones here from FX Home. We thought we'd go into a bit more detail about this shot from our last video and show you how we went about animating the particle to move around the actor. So this is the finished shot, but we're actually going to go from the start. So let's just take our guy here. As you can see, it's just a standard green screen shot. We'll convert that into a comp. And now we can start working on it. Now the first thing, of course, is to take this original green screen shot and key out the guy. So we'll do a quick garbage mount over him here so that we don't have to worry about all the stuff around the edge. And then in our effects here, we'll just find the color difference key, add that to the shot. Let's go into controls here so we've got a bit more freedom of what we're doing. As you can see, the key has started to work, but we've still got quite a lot of fuzz around the edges. What we want is for him to be solid white and everything else to be black. So let's just boost this up a bit so we can drop out the green screen a little bit more. And then you can see we've lost a bit of detail around his heel, so we'll just return that and just tweak it. There we go. So that's quite a clean key. We've got to be at the edge of the green screen here, so we'll just add on another mask shape up here, change it to subtract. You can turn off the mat and you can see we've got the key there. It's a little bit of green fringing around the edges, so let's just get rid of that using a handy spill removal effect. There we are. If we zoom in you can see there's a little bit of stepping around the edges here, that's due to the particular codec and camera that we shot this on. This is actually a shot we did a few years back which we we're repurposing for this example. So to fix that let's throw on the chroma blur effect before the key is applied and that will give us a nice smooth edge. So there we go, nicely keyed out actor there, we'll just close that down. What we actually want to do at the moment this is just a 2D composite, so we'll switch this from 2D to 3D. That will give us the option to add a camera, which of course will say yes. And now we are in 3D. Although it looks pretty much the same, you can see that if we actually start moving around, we are in fact in the 3D comp, and our video layer is now a flat plane in there, which we can do whatever we want with. I'll just reset the camera back to where it was. Okay, so how do we go about creating this particle? Well, the first thing we want to do is add a point. Points are reference points, essentially, that you can tie other things to. They don't show up in your rendering, but you can use them to control other things. You could try and program the particle engine to actually do the swirly motion by itself, but that's more complicated than it needs to be. So what we'll actually do is take a point, again, turn that into 3D. And we'll just position it down by the feet here. Let's go and check out his position keyframes. Jump forward a couple of seconds, up to the top of his head. Another couple of seconds, let's put it back down to the feet. So that just creates some really simple up and down kind of motion there. We actually want it to be rotating as well. That's the rotation Y value. You can see it rotating there. We'll just return that back to zero because what we want to do, place a keyframe down there, jump back here and let's rotate that by about three turns perhaps. So you can see that as it goes up and down, it's also rotating around. So there we go, that's the basis of our movement. We'll actually rename this, let's call it center point because what we actually want is for something to be orbiting around the edge here so let's create another point we're actually going to turn that into 3d as well and then parent this point to the center point so this means that as the center point moves so does this of course it's not in the right place because the center point starting down here so let's take our new point drag it down to here drag it out to the edge a little bit we'll call this orbit point now you can see it's moving around the edge exactly as we want. If I actually select both of these points, you can see in a bit more detail what's happening. So the center point is just moving up the top, while the orbit point, which is parented to it, is moving around the edges. And if we just quickly zoom out into our perspective view here, you can see even better that the outer one is in fact moving around the video layer which is basically what we want from our particle. So let's add a particle engine and uh, see exactly what we do there. Okay, so by default the particles just spew out in the center there from the single point, not actually doing any animation at all. So let's go into the controls of the particle engine. Here we have the shape, we've got a point emitter coming out here, which is the center point here. Let's attach this to the orbit point. Okay. If we now animate, you can see that the emitter of the particles is now following the same trajectory as the orbit point that we animated earlier. So in really very few steps and very quickly, we've got the basic animation that we want for this particular shot. 
Of course, these particles don't look exactly like what we want. So let's go and adjust those a little bit. Uh, we'll put the speed down to zero, like this, so that as soon as the particles are emitted, they don't go anywhere. And that creates the kind of trail appearance, like that. These are just the default particles here, so we'll actually go in and add a texture. Let's just add this sparks. Slightly smaller texture. Uh, we're actually going to change it from normal blend to add blend, which gives us this kind of intense look there. So up here we have particles per second, and currently there's 50 particles being emitted every second. Let's put that up to about 200. That gives us a nice solid band. At the moment, it's exactly the same width all the way along, so we'll just do a slight tweak to that. Let's go in and find the particle system's lifetime controls. This is what you can use to affect each particle after it is emitted, so it determines the behaviour of the particle from its birth all the way down to its death. And what we want to change here is the scale. So at the moment it's exactly the same size all the way through its life. Let's change that slightly. We'll add another keyframe here, move it to the end, drop that down to zero. And you can see now that as particles go through the course of their life they become gradually smaller. And that gives the impression of this whole thing moving around and around in you know, a kind of thinning out tail kind of way. This is just one example of what you can do with points in the Pascal engine. There's so much more potential to it and that stuff we'll be covering in many tutorials down the line. Thanks for watching!